Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. Previously, Mofon was somehow able to awaken two rare talents, but kept it a secret until he had to use them in a difficult duel. He is eventually forced to move to another city where he would shockingly awaken another two talents. After rescuing the city from a deadly plague, Mofon chooses a reward that allows him to enter the prestigious Fire Element class at school. Mofon insults all of his new classmates, which leads to him being challenged by hundreds of them. He manages to demonstrate his immense strength and later finds a creature called the Flame Bell. It is still a baby, but once it grows a bit, it will be immensely powerful. Mofon plans to speed up the process by defeating the top 10 students and entering the 3-step tower. The story continues as Mofon's fight against Yu Ming has just begun. Mofon can't even cast basic spells and thinks back to moments ago when Yu Ming used her spell on him. Mofon explains that the scariest thing about psychic mages is their casting speed, and if you aren't faster than them, then it's pointless to even try and have an effective attack. Mofon gives it a try anyway, but Yumi is quick to use her psychic magic and instantly stops him. She then uses a fire spell that is extremely powerful, and Mofon is forced to bring out his blood beast boots and run away. Mofan is shocked though when he just barely manages to get away from her attack and realizes that her fiery fist has twice the range as ordinary people. Zhu Meng watches the fight and states that Yu Ming's psychic magic is unmatched, even in the psychic department. On top of that, she is naturally talented with the fire element. Zhu Meng acknowledges Mofan's strength but points out that he may have finally met his match. Zhu Ming then prepares her next attack as Mofan still can't use any basic spells. He considers casting Vanishing Shadows to get to safety, but decides that he can't reveal his secret, even if it means losing. Mofan then manages to summon the very dependable Wolfie, but Yuming proves her power once again as her next attack devastates the area. Mofan mounts his beast to maneuver around all the destruction. His friends watch in horror, concerned for him, while his enemies are glad to see that Mofan will finally lose. Just then, the necklace Dean Chao gave him springs to his hand, and Mofan points out what a stroke of luck it is. The fire continues to ravage the stadium, but it finally stops while Mofan is still safe. The audience watches, but they all hate Mofan and say that if it wasn't for the fact that he had double elements, he would have already lost. Mofan uses this moment to think about how the necklace can help him resist a psychic shock and decides to try something. He commands Wolfie to keep her busy for as long as it can and thinks about how the only thing they can do is drag the fight out. This way, they can wait until Yu Ming gets impatient and makes a mistake. We then watch as Wolfie makes his way towards Yu Ming in order to attack, but Yu Ming is well prepared and uses a spell called Spirit Ripple Pacify. The spell seems to be incredibly effective against Wolfie, who goes from ferocious beast to puppy eyed pet in an instant. Yu Ming praises Wolfie for being completely obedient and sends him off to go play in the corner by himself. Mofan can't believe his eyes as he watches this unfortunate event unfold right in front of him and sends Wolfie back to the other realm for the time being. Yu Ming refuses to just sit by and let Mofan do as he pleases, so she uses another immensely powerful attack to stop him. This attack directly hits Mofan and his friends are devastated to see him take so much damage. Yu Ming can't understand why, even with his back against the wall, Mofan still refuses to protect himself with magic equipment. Mofan is quick to state that he doesn't want to hide his muscles under any armor and just wants to continue the fight. Yu Ming is annoyed to hear him talking so casually and states that if he insists on not using magic equipment, then he will have no one but himself to blame for what happens next. Mofan then focuses deeply as he prepares an attack, but Yu Ming is quick to use psychic shock and tells him that anything he tries is useless. The shock once again begins to stop his ability to use magic but Mofan uses a necklace and concentrates even more. Mofan's spell is restored as Yu Ming is shocked to see him use focus equipment, and Mofan states that it's his turn to attack now. Mofan then finally goes on the offensive with an immensely powerful Rose Flames Fiery Fist Nine Halls attack that marvels everyone, but Yu Ming is quick to use magic equipment and dodges it. Mofan isn't even close to being finished though, and uses his Thunderbolt Mad Dance next. Everyone watches in awe at his next attack as lightning fills the sky and rains down on Yu Ming. Her magic equipment does well to protect her for the time being, but the lightning continues to rain down on her. As time passes, her magic armor begins to give in and the attack finally lands. Yu Ming's armor is now completely destroyed and Mofan points out that she no longer has a way to defend herself. She has nothing left to do but acknowledge Mofan's strength. 
She realizes now that Mofan wasn't using the magical necklace from the start and had simply waited for the perfect opportunity to attack. Everyone is stunned at the outcome and Mofan is officially announced the winner of the duel. Some parts of the crowd begin to cheer for Mofan's victory as he could soon become the new face of the fire element department since he managed to cultivate two elements to the third level. Dong Fang Li watches as well and is told that he might be the only one that can stop Mofan. Mofan's friends watch the event too and are amazed by his strength. Afterwards, Mofan's wounds are treated by Bai and he explains that the medicine he received from Yu Ming is very effective as it has the ability to completely treat the after effects of his burns. Bai states that Mofan was severely burned but luckily he has rough skin and thick flesh. Bai wonders if Mofan has found a healing mage to help him as he can tell that Mofan's demon element is fluctuating and it needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Mofan isn't too worried about it and asks if Bai can heal his demon beast Wolfie, but Bai is quick to point out that he isn't a veterinarian. Nearby, a couple students discuss how the great demon king Mofan has a provisional candidate slot for the international college tournament. They assume that the success is going to Mofan's head and state that the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Mofan overhears this and Bai warns him to be prepared as it will be a very difficult fight. Elsewhere, Zhang's comrade laments how they were sent on a mission to find a survey team that went missing over two months ago. Zhang understands his frustration but points out that they still need to complete the mission at the end of the day. He then explains that the local villagers told them about something that used to sleep underground in that area, but it seems to be waking up frequently now. Just then, he receives a call from Mofan who asks about where Kong is. Zhang explains that he heard that Kong brought back the Darkwing Wolf's head back to Bo City, but hasn't spoken to Kong himself in a while. He tells Mofan that he is currently on a mission and will let him know if he hears from Kong at all. Mofan asks him to look out for himself, but Zhang tells him not to worry. Out of the entire squad, he is the best at running away, and he would be totally fine even if everyone else died. His comrade hears him say this and asks him not to casually talk about them dying, but Zhang explains that it was just hypothetical. Zhang claims that their mission shouldn't end up being that dangerous, but we then see the rest of their squad is being chased by a horde of demon beasts. Even more monsters begin to emerge from the ground and one of the soldiers explains that the mountain is to blame since it blocked the sun before nightfall. Zhang wonders where the rest of the squad is gone and he is told that they all sacrificed their lives. They aren't nearly out of danger however so the squad must run as they are in constant danger of being attacked by demon beasts emerging from the ground beneath their feet. One of their members gets caught in a very dangerous spot but is lucky as Zhang manages to react just in time to save him. This man is seemingly just about to be rescued, but an attack from a demon beast makes it impossible. The captain who tried to save him ends up in a bad spot himself as he is grabbed by several demons. He tells Zhang to run away as quickly as possible and to not look back just as he takes a devastating attack in the back. The rest of the squad falls to these same demon beasts and Zhang can only watch in horror as the captain once again tells him to run for his life. Zhang and his comrade do just that as nighttime arrives and Zhang warns Wang to be careful. Unfortunately, his warning comes a bit too late as Wang falls into the ground and Zhang is utterly shocked when he sees what's in the hole. It's a terrifying sight as tons of demon beasts are crawling their way up to the surface and Zhang can't help but feel like a failure for not being able to save anyone. Just then, he is approached by a demon that shockingly has the head of his captain. This proves to be too shocking for Zhang to handle as he falls backwards into the demon hole. The situation grows worse and worse as we see that Kong is missing an urgent call. Thanks for watching part 32.